Hi everybody, um, I'm going to be tying a fly that is actually one that I've you know, been doing a bit of lately for um, trout and redfin and bass, um, probably more so bass and redfin than trout because of the size of it. It's this one here. Um, it's actually uh, a variation of one that I saw that a guy by the name of John Lee had tied. Um, and what I've done though is put a tungsten bead head on the front there um, and uh, changed a little bit of the pattern itself. Um, so the materials you're going to need are obviously a hook. This is a bent back hook, um, which is a Daiichi hook. I think it's a 1710 from memory. Um, the thread I'm going to use is a black 6-0 thread. Uh, we've got knotted pheasant tail here so they're just pheasant tail um, knotted to make some legs if I get those in shot there we go all right and if you don't know how to knot pheasant tail legs there's plenty of videos on YouTube on how to do it um, an interesting thing is this is surgical tape just the normal surgical tape you get in a first aid kit or buy from the chemist um, chenille uh, just normal everyday chenille uh, obviously the bead which is a one of the flymen nymph heads um, so they're actually a pre-shaped tungsten bead uh, so it actually looks like the head um, the other thing is some stretchy fly skin or nymph skin whatever you got this is just the clear this is the 1 8 or 3 mil version of it and some wire and in this case I'm going to be using gold ultra wire in medium um, so that's that. Uh, first step is um, to lay down some thread, which I've done. Put the bead head on, obviously. Um, so let me just start this thread here. And what I'm going to do first is tie in a couple of pieces of, of lead. Um, and what that does is both gives me a little bit of extra weight here at the back, but also provides the width for the the fly so the lead I'm using is just point two uh, lead wire um, and all all we've got to do is basically uh, put some each side of the hook so be very careful because you actually want it to sit on the side and not move over to the top so you can see I'm trying to tie that in down the shank of the hook to the side of the hook and not on top of the hook or underneath the hook so that's important because it's what's going to give this fly the width that we need for the abdomen of the um, dragonfly nymph that we're trying to imitate in this particular case. Um, so the second piece. So just do loose wraps to start off with until you get it sitting where you want it and then tighten it up and come back over the top. But you can see there it's um, the leads both sides and then I just cut it so that it's tapered at the end and not sticking out. All right, so that's that piece, pretty straightforward. All right, the next thing is to tie in some wire. So that's what I'm gonna do next. So I'm just using, as I said, the gold, and that's the medium size. And I'm just gonna put that up the center of the hook shank, tie that down. Come all the way to the bend like that. Okay, so that's that. The next thing is to take some surgical tape. So what I've done is I've taken the normal width of the surgical tape, cut it in half. All right, and I've obviously cut a point here, which is what I'm going to tie in on the fly. Back a little bit to hold it in place. Now what we're trying to do with the surgical tape is give the body some shape. Now you could do that with thread, um, but to get the you know the shape, it's going to take a lot of thread, especially six A. You'd probably you know if you wanted to use um, flat wax, you'd you'd be um, you'd be better off. But um, this is just a easy way of getting the shape of the body. Um, but it also is a lot smoother. Um, so you, you'll see once I've tied this down and then cut off any excess as close as I can to the body of the fly. 
um, you'll see that I get a really good consistent shape uh, from doing it this way. All right, so I'm tying that in. If I turn that that way, you can see the the body shape just there. All right, that's that bit. All right, so now that that bit's done, I'm just going to take a piece of the stretchy fly skin, um, just measure it out, cut it off. And again, I'm going to cut it to a point. All right, so I'm just going to get the scissors and cut a point. And that just, again, makes it easier to tie in. So I'm putting that on the top and I'm going to tie it back. As I go back, I am going to stretch it. All right, so it becomes slightly thinner at the back end. That's that bit done. Let me just sit that out of the way. So the next step is some chenille and I'm just going to strip a little bit off so I've got the loose threads. What I'm trying not to do is build the body up more than I have to. Um, so what I do is get the chenille and pull the thread, some of the material off. So I've just left with the underlying thread and I tie that underlying thread in um, to the the body of the fly and you'll see it's made no difference to the to the fly at all there so the next thing is we're just going to wind this forward all right so try and get it reasonably close wraps to the previous one and if you get a gap move it back like so to just past where the um where the bend is is probably the best spot all right, then I'm just going to get the thread and cross that over. Hold that in place. All right, get the scissors, cut that as close to there as we can. Now I'm just going to wind back a little bit so I go over the chenille and that really locks it in. So you can see that. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is grab a Sharpie. All right, so just a black Sharpie. And I'm going to do two things. I'm going to colour the back of the chenille. Just with some, some black. Give it a little bit of a darker colour back and a brighter belly. Right. The reason I've gone for the red is obviously it, it's an attractive colour to the fish. Um, and especially for bass and redfin, they sort of like the brighter colours. Oranges, reds. And that sort of thing but if you also look at something like a fly like a craig's night time it's got the red and the black and all that sort of stuff happening so all i've done is just colored the um the fly skin black as well all right so then what i'm going to do is take the fly skin pull it up over the back and try and make sure i keep it relatively straight now i come up over very loosely and i pull down on it okay so i'm not pulling to the side I'm trying to pull down so that it folds correctly. And by that, I mean folds down and not back over itself. Okay, like that. And then I'll just, again, tie that down. Pull that over the top. <clears throat> Next thing to do is get the, um, the wire. And I'm going to go the opposite way to the way I tied the material in. So just wrapping that over. Move the back pieces if it makes the um, stretch skin move to try and get those fairly level so take your time there's no hurry once you get used to it you can do it a bit quicker but you know the, the key thing is to try and make sure that you don't trap the material so it's folding back on itself All right. and this just gives the that shiny buggy back sort of look that we want. All right, tie that wire off. So I'm just using an old pair of scissors to cut the wire. Use whatever you want, but don't use your good scissors because it will blunt them pretty quick. All right, so that's that bit. So now I'm just going to straighten this up and take all the way to the bead head, the um, stretch skin, like so. So it's completely out of the way now, all right? 
And then the next bit is to tie in the legs, which we'll do shortly. So I'm just going to take the pheasant legs that I've got pre-knotted, like so. And you want them so that the bit's facing down. And then I'm just going to tie that on the side. And we're going to do one each side. All right. So make sure all the fibres are sitting over that one side. And then the same for this second one. Try and line them up fairly closely. Tie it into the side. And I'll just check and make sure they're lined up roughly, which they are. And then we do the next step of the legs. We've tied the legs in and you can see them. There, <clears throat> I've kept two pieces of pheasant tail on each side. The rest you just trim off. All right, so the next step is to take some dubbing. And I am using um, hairy ice dub from, <clears throat> from um, Hairline. Uh, and what we're going to do is just try and dub the legs into the position we want them to, to end up in, uh, as well as obviously build up the... Um, the front of the body a little bit so I'm just trying to see where that is okay there so I'm gonna put some dubbing in across the back of it first to hold those rear legs in place All right, so that's going to be the thickest part and then we're just gonna dub in between the legs so keep it fairly thin you don't want it too thick or it's going to move your legs all over the place but you want it thick enough that it holds the legs in the position you want them in um, so you take them this is probably the fiddliest part because you've got to try and maneuver the legs a little bit um, like that so now I've got those two and then the front ones I'm coming in front and up towards the um, the bead at the front of the fly all right and that'll help push the legs out to the side a little bit, not too far back. <clears throat> and then just manoeuvre them while you're doing that. Don't pull on too hard on the pheasant or you'll snap it off. So I've just manoeuvred it so you can see there. So they're sticking out nicely there at the front. And then the next step is to take the um, stretchy skin again. And what I'm going to do is come back to between the two front legs. So across, back between the front legs, and I'm tying that down like that. So now that's tied in. And then I'm going to come back in front of those legs again. And now what I'm going to do is just dub behind the bead. And this will do two things. One, hold the bead in place. And the other is also to help keep those legs out, as well as hold the um, stretchy skin in, in the position we need it to sit in. So a couple of wraps of the dubbing there. That's a bit too much. Take some of that off. All right. Now make sure the bead's on the way you want it to sit because these ones have actually got the eyes built into the bead. All right, that's that. Whip finish. So that's the tying part done. Uh, the next step after this is basically to fix up the... So I'm going to cut that there. That's the wing case done. Now it's to get the legs to the shape we want. Now for this, and this is like I said, one of the toughest parts, I use a really fine pair of needle nose tweezers. All right, and then I get to where I want the fold in the leg to be and I get it between the tweezers, squeeze, and then push it up against the body. And then just sort of fold that. So you get a little crease in, in the pheasant fibre. And then you want to just make sure that it sits nicely. That's that side. Again, don't 
go too hard or you'll snap the pheasant and that's what you really don't want to have happen so all right so that's that so if i show you this now side on you can see the legs are folded going forward and then what i do is to stiffen them up just a little bit and to make them a bit more hard wearing is just a little drop of this uv epoxy all right and what you can do is while you're doing that get them to sit where you want them to sit before you set the epoxy all right so that's one side same on the other side just a drop on the on the join and then the back one right, so you can see those are done and then just trim them to the length you want because you don't want them too long there and that's it fly done all right that's it that's it it's it's a complex fly but not super hard um but you know definitely one worth having in your box uh if you're fishing for bass or redfin and smaller versions this is a size 10 the smaller versions um you could obviously use for trout thanks guys